So welcome to the Rebirth Sessions. It's great to meet you here. Today, um, yeah, the idea of vigilance has, say, entered in the system. <laughs> and, and that's a great, yeah, great tool. You could say vigilance is a great tool to, to stay on track. And so today we're going to take, say, a look at that. And I, I just looked at it today, it's like, wow, that's so uh, amazing to actually have an idea of vigilance. Uh, you could say, like, against what or for what? And, and then it's like, why, is, why would that be so necessary? Why do you need to be that vigilant against something? As if you're not seeing it right, right? So it's like, if you, if you stay centered, if you stay in your remembrance, then there's, then it's easy to, to be vigilant. And if you doubt what you need to be vigilant against, then it's going to be like quite a, quite, a, quite some work. So that, yeah, that's very simply said, of course, um, when I say it like this, but um, yeah, we have to start somewhere. And so today, with the idea of vigilance, I want to say re, uh, yeah, bring back into our awareness something that Joel was sharing with us in the schedule of this week on the website, and um, he he comes with a word that I didn't hear before, which is eternal vigilance, and he uses it in, in a very specific way. So I I want to take a look at that right away. It is interesting. Watchfulness, eternal vigilance. These words were given to us, not for copy book words. They're like warnings. They're warnings. Eternal vigilance is the price of spiritual living. Watch, watch, watch. Pray, pray, pray without ceasing. We do not leave our nets once and forever. No, we're constantly leaving our nets. Every time that we are tempted to a material reliance, every time we are tempted to a personal sense of love, every time we are tempted to a dependence, the call comes, leave your nets. So that's a beautiful practice, of course. But I want to go into that. I want to dive in it today a little bit. Because the eternal vigilance is the price of spiritual living, so that does look like a sacrifice, as if there's a price tag on it. Uh, eternal vigilance. I pray without ceasing. We do not leave our nets once and forever. Now we're constantly leaving our nets. Now why is that? So Joel gives us a lot to say to um, contemplate, in fact. And uh, we do this too, of course. Uh, maybe you have already taken a look at this. But see, here's the thing that this came to me as an, as an idea to, to relax in this too. Like otherwise it would be, oh no, not another thing that I need to control or that I need to pay attention to or that I need to do in my awakening. Is maybe your backpack is already full with all kinds of practice and all kinds of things. So now that is not what is asked either. So it's not about loading yourself up with all kinds of regulations in your awakening. But how do we get to the place where you actually can hear this, where you actually start to see what is going on with the idea of vigilance? And you don't get that just right away. Um, so that's why we, I take a little bit of time to enter into that, so that actually I'm able to transfer this as an idea to you. And we're not there yet, because what I've read, yeah, you've read it too, probably. And you, I don't know what your response was to it, but it's like, yeah, there's something there. So vigilance is the price of spiritual living, for instance, that, that expression. It's like, well, is it really a price of uh, spiritual living? Like truth uh, doesn't need vigilance, right? Truth is true. So it's like, that's, that's what we are. Like you cannot, you cannot, 
yeah, you, you can try to separate separate yourself off from it, which we have done in our imagination, in our dream, but uh, that is no reality. So, so what then exactly is uh, going to help us to see what this is specifically about? Now that that's an interesting idea, because vigilance is, of course, really important, but it needs to be, say, focused on, uh, say, something. Like I'm not even going into it right now exactly, because then you would hold it as an as an almost like a mechan a mechanism or a law, and it isn't. And so, the idea of vigilance, what what comes with it is in fact the whole idea of of time of um, yeah human ideas human consciousness human concepts human ideas human habits are all based on an idea um, that has nothing to do with truth so, but the thing is that, and we know this from the rebirth sessions, like we know that we've heard the truth as a letter, letter of truth, like we've heard that, but um, to bring it into the practicality of the day is exactly why we're here. And we're trying to apply what we have learned. Now, what is the price for spiritual living? It's a vigilance. That's amazing. Now, and the one thing that I try to get you, um, try to move you into with your attention is in fact to take a look at, at the whole idea, at the whole idea of awakening. Because what is awakening? See, everything that we do, even in this rebirth session, is a temporary device. It's temporary. We use it temporarily to, to come to an upliftment in our consciousness, to, to leave something for a moment, to come into a new perspective, like a new horizon or a new world to enter into. Like we, we do this with all the meetings that we have. We enter in, we have a possibility to enter into an uplifted state, you could say. So it's like the, the human frequency of the ego frequency, as it is mentioned many times in the, in the course, it's like the ego, um, you're determined to be you as a human being too. It's like that's why the trouble comes in, in fact. It's like you, you do things uh, with uh, say establishing yourself here in time and space, thinking that you are that thing that walks around on planet Earth and all this. So it's like that's part that part is creating all the time too. Like you literally make this up by uh, valuing ideas, by say uh, adoring these patterns and habits that keep you in the middle of the road, not too much to the left or the right. But does that have anything to do with truth? No. Does it have to do with harmonious living? I don't know what you're talking about. Like it has nothing to do with harmonious living, even though that's the purpose why you come up with habits and patterns. You try to stay like balanced, you could say. And what is balance to do with life? Nothing. Um, so that's an interesting part too. So now you can almost feel that coming as an idea. It's like. So what is the action of mind then, you could say? What is the action that we have to, to perform in order to be vigilant? What is it that you have to do? Like, what, give, me, give me some instruction. <laughs> give me, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Like, well, this has not to do with you doing it. Because if you were, uh, say, completely aware of where you find yourself, you would not need to be vigilant. You would not need to practice this. So it's like the practicality of this is in fact, uh, say, that you give up, uh, give up, literally, just like Joel said too with leaving your nets, like you actually have to give up trying to behave as a human being, trying to do the things that you're acquainted to, like you're so familiar with. 
we don't want you to do that any longer. Why not? Because it doesn't bring you anything. Why not? Because it is it is over. It's like whatever you perceive, whatever you think about anything is in fact always say related to an idea of past. It is gone. It is over. You perceive a problem. OK, so what's the problem that you perceive the problem, not the problem itself? No, you perceive the problem in a time space continuum that is over. That's already gone. And you say like, well, what are you going to tell me now that there's no such thing as this? I think, no, there's no such thing as this. That's right. Now, what, what is left then for me to do here? It's like, how can I possibly be vigilant if there's no such thing as this time frame continuum where I think I find myself with and like a selection of problems and difficulties? Now, what am I going to do with that? How am I possibly going to find my way to, say, find a handle on the idea of vigilance? Yeah, this is this is our practice. This is our practice. And now, what do we do? We step out of the situation. We step back. We leave our nets continuously, leaving our nets. Then so we leave our nets. We're not going to engage we're not going to perform we're not going to uh, set up a plan we're not going to fix it we're not going to do anything with these nets no we recognize it for what it is and that is a meaningless activity that's already over like we don't have to do anything with these nets anymore because everything is that is is provided for everything that is is given and not anything else so let's read it one more time. It will sound different now, I know for sure. And I'm going to use a bit more words now and then. So watchfulness, eternal vigilance, these words were given to us, not for copy book words. Now they are warnings. Eternal vigilance is the price for spiritual living. Watch, watch, pray, pray, pray without ceasing. What is praying without ceasing? Like, what is actually prayer? Pray for things and, and a better world and a better health and a better whatever? No, 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 no. So what is this praying then? Okay, well, take another look at that. We do not leave our nets once and forever. No, we're constantly leaving our nets because the tendency of us is to hold on to these nets and try to work with it and try to catch something or try to repair them or try to fix them or try to do whatever with it. Every time that we are tempted to a material reliance, every time we are tempted to a personal sense of love, every time we are tempted to a dependence, every time we are tempted to a dependence, the, the call comes, leave your nets. So what is that doing? Is that the doing on your part? Well, it's leaving it. It's leaving it. Leaving, leaving, leaving it. Because it, what you were holding on to is already over. Now here comes a very interesting statement that came to me today too. It's like, wow, yeah. Woo oh my God, if you look at that. Now we're talking vigilance. Look at this. Now tell me, <laughs> talking about leaving your nets, now tell me, tell me about your life. So if you look back or for instance today or yesterday, whatever, in a moment that you can remember your doings, now how many percent, you could say, how many percent of your doings were body related? I'm mentioning a couple, sleeping eating, uh, going somewhere to get food, driving in a car, living in a house, um, walking around with your dog maybe, <laughs> um, uh, reading something about healthy food, reading something about mm, medication or physical care or maybe you just signed a new contract for your life insurance or maybe 
which is also body related you know it's like you could you can say like everything that you do in your human frame of reference that is material related just as joe mentions here has all it's like uh, the illusion included that you are that thing that is walking around on planet earth in this body suit you could say and thinking that it needs all kinds of protection that it needs this it needs that and that it cannot take care of itself you need to keep it warm you do no 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 um so where is your vigilance how are you going to perform vigilance here anyone <laughs> see that's totally impossible isn't it that's totally impossible it looks like that so there is a practice leaving your nets is the practice leaving it leaving your nets leaving your nets stepping back not being concerned can you prevent yourself from eating well you don't have to but a lot of your activities is connected to eating making money to buy food driving with your whatever means of transportation to a certain place where you can get it or go to your garden to to harvest it but you see like all the human activities based on yeah safety and comfort but basically um, safety and comfort for the body um, we don't talk mind as human beings we don't talk mind like there's a little bit of okay mental health care or um, say taking enough rest and doing things like that in order to sustain yourself and these kind of things but when it comes down to it most of it is just body related and that's the one thing that you're not and but in your dream you are and you are this character and walking around with all kinds of ideas so that gives you a little bit of a different perspective on the idea of uh, vigilance so to be vigilance against the illusion of yourself what's what yeah the means that are given to yeah to help you in fact uh, to help you perform an eternal vigilance is in fact to stay present here and how you do that nobody gives cares nobody cares so how do we do that meditation praying without ceasing letting go relaxing when you when you perceive a problem recognizing I am perceiving a problem with my senses. Is that a problem? No, nope, it's not. Okay, so go back to myself. Wow, I have to hand this over because I really think I have a problem. Is that a problem? No, that is not a problem. So I, I come to the practice of meditation. I come to the practice of becoming silent and giving it over. I'm not correcting my dream. I'm not fixing anything in my dream. I'm not making more rules for myself to adhere to in order to be the perfect spiritual student. None of that. Like, no, no, no. Such thing doesn't exist. No. So the only thing that really is helpful is to come into an experience in which you are uplifted out of this. Then you see like, ah, oh, there's a kingdom and and it's mine like i this is where i abide in fact that is that is where i abide and and if i stay right here i'm in no fear nothing can touch me in fact like no fear can come to me nothing can come nigh to my dwelling place if i stay present you know so this is so so incredibly essential so what did you, does your mind do it's you have perceived the problem what does it do it looks for a solution what do you do when you observe this in yourself you say oh wait a minute stop here no 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 there's a different way of looking at this now that is being vigilant there's a different way of looking at this 
I give myself the opportunity to see this in a different way and I wait for that to happen to me. In fact, it is like continuously coming back to the practice of I want to be in communication. Communication is the only thing that um, say will confirm to me that I'm not separate from my creator. All the rest is absolutely has no effect whatsoever. I can do affirmations. I can do repetitions of any kind of Bible phrase. If it doesn't come back to me as an, as an uh, experience, I'm not really accepting it. I'm actually denying it. So is that going to be effective? No, it's not. So this is this is being vigilant and that's why this is like yeah, great practice. So there are some more um say instructions that are given by Jesus in the course in miracles and I love to mention a couple because of, uh, say, the specific instruction for, um, for vigilance, which can really help you to, to broaden this out a little bit in your own idea about it. it is. Oh yeah, so these, were, these are the lessons of the Holy Spirit. So these are important because, in fact, it brings you back to uh, your spirit relationship, your, your center, to have, give all to all. To have peace, teach peace, to learn it. Be vigilant only, oh that's the word, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. So when you are, say, disrupted, when you are, uh, say, confused, when you are in any kind of situation that's not perfect peace or happiness, you come back to this. Like, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Oh yeah, wait a minute, I was really like vigilant to dive deep into my illusion of myself, but that's not going to bring me any peace. So the lessons of the Holy Spirit direct me within, where the only solution is, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Oh yeah. And teach peace to learn it. Teach peace to learn it does mean an, like a sense of inclusion, a sense of restfulness and um, letting go of what you think the situation is. To have, give all to all. Like continuously let your mind be in a state of giving, giving everything to everything. In fact it is a state of forgiveness. and. Maybe we come to that too, but it's like to give all to all continuously. You see a conflict, you experience a conflict. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to start a fight? No. You're going to settle down. And not that you have to say yes to everything, no. You bring it completely to yourself, hand it over. And, and in fact, what I say to spirit is this, is like, here I give this to you because I cannot be concerned with it. Because I, like, I want to stay in my peace. I cannot be concerned with the things that seem to be confronting me or conflicting in me. I hand it over because my peace of mind is everything to me. That is the only thing that I experience when I'm present. If I, I don't, I cannot lose that, but I don't want to be distracted from it either. Now that you could call a vigilance, but it's more you stand your ground. It's like, I, for me, peace is my first priority above all things. That's where I stay. Now, let everything else for a moment collapse into itself. Let it fall apart, crumble, or whatever the beautiful terms that disperse. Let it wrapped, let it... <laughs> Yeah, let it, let it spread out, but it's not going to disturb my peace. So in that sense, that is a vigilance for the center of your being. Okay, so Jesus uses different words. Here it is. Certainty is of God for you. Vigilance is not necessary for truth, but it is necessary against illusions. Truth is without illusions and therefore within the kingdom. Everything outside the kingdom is illusion. Yeah, so certainty is of God for you. You can completely rely on that. 
The certainty comes from God, not from you. It comes from God. If you say, I'm certain of that, if that isn't God-related, it's useless. Vigilance is not necessary for truth, but is necessary against illusions. So everything outside the kingdom is illusion. Do you need to do anything with that? Yeah, letting, letting it go, not giving it any meaning, letting it go. I yeah, like this. So what you have made has thus divided your will and giving you a sick mind that must be healed, thinking that there are two wills, the will of God and your will, that there's a conflict between the two. Your vigilance against this sickness is the way to heal it. See, it's the sickness of mind because the mind determines how even how the body functions. If it wants to use it for separation, well, you can have the effect of that. It will give it to it in the illusion. So that's where the healing must take place then too, in the mind, recognizing, oh my God, I really thought I was separate from God and that I could separate myself off. Now I ask for an experience for that to be redone, like undone. You have exerted great effort to preserve what you have made because it is not true. Like That's why you also put a lot of effort in it, because it is not true. It, if it was true, it would be there no matter what. But it is not true, and that's why you have to exert great effort to, to make it work, you could say. So you get exhausted, you get tired, you get sick and tired of it. Therefore, you must now turn your effort against it. Well, that's a good one too, I love that. Only this can cancel out the need for effort and call upon the being which you both have and are. This recognition is wholly without effort because it is already true and needs no protection. It is the perfect safety of God. Therefore, inclusion is total and creation is without limit. Well, how does that sound? That's pretty awesome. It's like, yes, effortless. That's that is like a, a major, you could say that's a major um, focal point. If, if I am struggling, if it takes tremendous effort to come to do something or to keep something going, well, let it fall apart. Let it go. Because what are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove to yourself? Nothing. It's a use, you know, like it's, it's an energy drain, you could say. Remembering who you are is effortless. It's much, much easier. Yeah, we had these expressions <coughs> before, like for, for laughing, he only used two muscles. And for being, say, unhappy or being nasty, or for instance, you use hundreds of muscles. So it is like laughing is so much easier. It's like, ha <laughs> ha, it is a relaxation. While looking angry or sad is an, is an incredible, um, is an incredible uh, effort, in fact, that, you, that you, you use a lot of muscle for that. Now, that's not necessary. This was just like a uh, comparison, but that is, it's funny to look at it that way. It's very comparable. So you find yourself struggling. Stop right there. What are you doing? You're busy in your dream trying to make it work. Is there a necess necessity to do that? No, there is not. Do you believe that? No, you don't. That's why you try. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's like a whole universe. So this is another vision, like another way of looking at it. There's a whole universe ready for you to support your efforts, like to support what is true. Not your efforts, but what is true. It supports you completely. It gives you everything you need in the right time. Now here you come, 
and say like, no, I want this and that, and I want that, and in this time, and it has to look like this, and if it doesn't come, I'm really upset. You set yourself up for a disappointment, and and that's not necessary. So one after the other, another disappointment, another disappointment, another disappointment. Like, oh my God, it's so heavy, it's so difficult. What am I doing? Why am I doing this to myself? Well, maybe you don't even say that, but it is true, of course. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I making it so hard for myself? I'm exhausted. I'm so done with this. Good. Great. So give up. Don't continue for the sake of what? Why would you continue this? So focus on the idea of effortless. Effortless is a great support in vigilance. Vigilance is not like an incredible load of extra uh, focus or extra work that you need to do in order to stay on track. No. Releases. Effortlessness. Looking for effortlessness. Letting go. Um, not automatically responding the way that you were used to. Not necessarily like being dependent and all this now and so the idea of what i talked about in the beginning with with the body function in fact has a lot to do with this because what you're trying to do with your body is is amazing i i if i <laughs> drive if i drive through town here it is so interesting to see that it's like oh look at what we're doing we we have for instance an yeah, what is it, um, 3,000 pound car that we drag over to the city with a body of maybe 150 pounds or something like this. And it's like uh, 20 times heavier. You try to make it easy for yourself. So it's like, okay, so you work hard to get a car like that so you can move that body from A to B and, and all of this. Like, that's just one example, but it's like there's so many of that. What we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, where we are going for a bigger house, an even bigger house, a boat, and whatever the material thing is that you're going for, or that seems to be the standard, without working together, without, say, sharing together, without, no, having that for yourself and don't let your neighbors ask for it to use it because you, you're going to say no. It's like, no, no, these are mine. No, get off my, get off my property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, it's interesting what we do. Yeah, protecting ourselves against ourselves. So this this is a bit like the uh, uh, yeah the introduction to to what is coming now, and these are probably some poems that we're going to see and listen to, and um, I'm very curious what that is going to be, but um, they probably have something to do with the vigilance with that idea, but coming from your perspective and how you deal with it or how you yeah, how this has inspired you to come up to express this. État d'être. J'ouvre mon cœur et laisse entrer la lumière. La paix me pénétre. Je me laisse guider par la sagesse de l'univers en pur esprit comme une empreinte dans l'éternité. Je réalise que chacun de mes pas est déjà béni par la main de Dieu. La divine présence en chaque être à la patience d'un ange 
qui attend avec confiance le retour de la renaissance de son enfant. State of being. I open my heart and let the light enter. The peace penetrates me. I let myself be guided by the wisdom of the universe in pure spirit, like an imprint in eternity. I realize that each of my steps is already blessed by the hand of God. The divine presence in each being has the patience of an angel who confidently awaits the return of the rebirth of his child. Je ne connais pas la voie vers Dieu sait où, mais déjà je n'entends plus le bruit de mes pas. Je semble errer depuis des millions d'années contre vents et marées, mais déjà le sable glisse entre mes doigts. Je ne sais pas comment embrasser l'éternité, mais déjà le souffle pur emplit mon être de lumière et de joie. Ici et maintenant, il n'y a plus de ville vers où se retourner. Comme le lichen d'une ancienne forêt croît à nouveau, je suis l'allié de ton plan parfait. Comme le loup invisible passe sans crainte dans l'horizon délié, je suis l'allié de ton plan parfait. I don't know the way to God knows where, but already I no longer hear the sound of my footsteps. I seem to have been wandering for millions of years against all odds, but already the sand is slipping through my fingers. I don't know how to embrace eternity, but already the pure breath fills my being with light and joy. Here and now, there is no city to turn to. Like the lichen of an ancient forest grows again, I am the ally of your perfect plan. As the invisible wolf passes without fear, in the unbound horizon, I am the ally of your perfect plan. Like a revolving door, not too fast, slow no more. What waiting for? Signs dropped in my lap? Just take a nap. Reverse can move forward, not needing this world, something rotting. Think, don't need the stink. Eternity is my name, need no gain outline, plan, just to be who I am. 
Diamond facets, a drop of dew, the view becoming anew. lining quietness renewing Universal fitting. Incorruptible lighting.
I titled Clouds, the ocean of the presence of the ocean. Clouds in their freedom ride on wind currents of air, spreading their essence. Clear pearls of moisture drop across global landscape, softly, violently. Mother of oceans, lands graced by her nurturance, oneness connected. The cycle gives back, water returns and renews, land and ocean share. Life inclusively joined throughout the universe, each face, the same face. And then I used a quote from Tuckeram. Yeah. This knowledge is direct. It is so very plain. God is in our grasp, but we have no experience. <laughs> 